In this video, I'm gonna go through all the heartaches, setbacks, and trials I went through in the pursuit of the dream of owning my own home. I find it really hard telling this story because it brings back a lot of heartache, bad memories, and shame. And I actually haven't really told many people this, so I really hope you do enjoy and learn something from my story. Although I know this is a hard story for me to tell, I know there is someone out there that can learn valuable lessons from my story and hopefully doesn't make the same mistakes that I made. I guess I could start my story as just when I was a child. I was one of seven children. I grew up here in the western suburbs of Melbourne in one of the poorest suburbs, Mountain South. It was a very rough area and you know we had a four bedroom tiny house with seven kids you know growing up in I had three people in my bedroom and I, when I grew up I always wanted to have a nice house like the other kids and I was always ashamed when my friends would come over because our house was pretty run down uh, we didn't have a lot of money and we couldn't really afford to um, fix a lot of things that were wrong with the house so I always said when I grew up I didn't want a big you know mansion I just wanted a nice clean modern a four bedroom home and that would be my dream home and I'd be happy with that and so I grew up met my beautiful wife we got married at 23 um, and the times were good you know I was doing good at work I got a promotion my wife had a full-time job um, I guess you could say we were living the dream but there was a part of that dream that was missing and I did want to own that home that I always wanted and so you know me being a big shot now I thought it's time it's time for me to become, you know, a big, a big adult, a big man, and go buy my first home. So I told my wife, it's time. Let's start looking for that dream home, our forever home that we can grow old together in, raise our children in, and, you know, be living the Australian dream. So me and my wife, we went to a fair few um, open for inspections and to some display homes uh, around the western suburbs of Melbourne, until we went to this one where we really fell in love with, and this was done through Metricon, not saying this is a great company or anything, but that's just who we chose at the time. And we went through, you know, the display home and they told us, you know, how we could do it. We had a, you know, a bit of saving saved up to pay down the deposit. And, you know, we were really excited and we found this home that we loved and we we're picturing, yes, this is the one, you know, this is our forever home that, you know, we could grow all together and raise a family in. And so that day we signed the contract. It was a three-bedroom, you know, home. It wasn't you know best home, but again, just growing up with someone that didn't have much, you know, it was plenty enough for me. And um, we signed that. We we're super happy. Um, it was a small block. It wasn't a big block. Maybe about two hundred and ninety square meters, because the blocks at those time the Western suburbs were getting tiny. So after we signed the contract, you know, the salesman said, you know, go home, tell your family, crack some champagne, congratulations on becoming a property owner. And I thought, yes, look at me. I'm married, you know, I've got a promotion at work and now I'm buying a house. I'm a big shot. And um, so, yeah, we went home, told our parents. Our parents were really proud of us. Um, we told our friends and uh, it was a good time. And then I got a phone call. And so I was just out and about one day and um, I got a phone call uh, from the broker and he says, you know, how you going? I'm like, yeah, good stuff like that. And he says, look, I've just been doing credit check on yourself and uh, your wife and yeah, your wife's all good, everything all good, but um, something's actually come up on your file. And uh, it was actually something from my past that's now going to come back and bite me in the ass. So he's on the phone and he tells me, look, You've actually got a default um, from A and Z. It says here for a personal loan. Do you know anything about that? And uh, I guess this will lead you into the other part of the story. So when I was about 20 years old, I discovered this magical wonderland called Crown Casino. I don't know if you guys have been there, but when you walk in there, it just smells like money. You know, there's the bright lights, you know, people winning money, people losing money. Um, and you know, this was when I was young. I didn't know really much about gambling was and I was a bit curious. So of course went in there, started playing around and I got interested in something called roulette. It's specifically, you know, on putting bets on red and black, the 50-50 bets. And you know, I went, won some money a few times, but um, 
then kept going back because I kept winning money. And uh, then one time I actually lost a fair bit of money, about a thousand dollars. And it was money I couldn't afford to lose. So I was young and dumb. And I said, you know what? I've got it all figured out. I've got a strategy now. I've got a plan. I can win it back. So I go down to my local branch and I ask for a loan. And the the loan manager like, so what do you want it for? And obviously I didn't want to tell him it was for gambling, but I said, oh, it's just a personal loan, just for personal reasons. And he didn't ask any more questions and he wrote me uh, a loan for $5,000. And so, you know, took that $5,000, went back, won some money, um, then went back again. And there was this one night where I, th I came up with this new strategy. It was very stupid, but I thought, you know, I was a genius at the time. It's pretty much, you may have heard of it, but you just double your bets every time you lose. You lose $10, then you bet $20. You lose $20, then you bet $40 until, you know, if it's a 50-50 odds, you win, you, you win your bet back. And so this night at our Crown Casino, I was doing my strategy, put down $10 on red, it was black. Put down $20, black again. Put down $40, black again. Put down $80, black again. Put down $160, black again. Now I was starting to sweat. I was getting pretty nervous, but I thought I've, I've lost too much money. You know, I've got to go all in now for sure. For sure, red's going to come. So I put down three twenty. Red didn't come, and I had you know my last bet, double you know double or nothing. I'm, this is it. I'm going home. I'm going all in. Or I'm going bust. And I dropped down six forty. And this was stupid, just to win that you know five ten dollars that I lost. This was a flaw in this system. It was so dumb, but this is what would happen at the time. I put down the 640 and I lost it. It was black again and my heart sunk and I just thought, what the hell are you doing? So I remember driving home and, you know, I was just too ashamed and too upset to go home. So I just put up in a parking lot and I was like, what the hell are you doing? And um, then I also got into something called online poker and got a bit addicted to that. And I pretty much got so tied up in this gambling habit, I quit my job. And I stopped paying the personal loan and I defaulted on the personal loan. And then once I did get my another job, I was literally just too afraid to call them back to settle this debt because it was just such a hard thing for me to go through and hard thing to talk about. I just wanted to forget about it. And obviously now, at this time, when I was trying to buy my first home, this default came back to bite me in the ass. So the broker said, look, I know some people that um, actually specialize in getting rid of defaults. And so, you know, kind of got my uh, hopes up. And um, so he said, look, we'll speak to this credit agency. They'll speak to the bank. They'll negotiate with them. I just had to pay a fee. I think uh, it was about $1,000 in legal fees and about $500 if they were able to remove the default. And that way I could still, you know, get that dream home I always wanted. So they went back and forth, back and forth. And it was a long process. I think it was about three months, but um, sadly they weren't able to remove the default and I actually found out some other crazy news in the meantime. So during this whole process of us looking for our home, you know, um, signing the contract, then finding out I've got a default and having to figure out how to get rid of that and, you know, the long lengthy out process, something else came up and um, I actually found out my wife was pregnant and um, that just made everything a lot harder and so the broker called me up and after going back and forth with the credit lawyers agency and the banks trying to get rid of the default so I could finally get that dream home that I always wanted and you know live that life with my wife and my soon-to-be son at the time uh, he said unfortunately they can't remove it and um, yeah you're not going to be able to settle on the property and we're gonna to have to you know break the contract and um you probably have to wait another five years before you can do it again and that really uh broke my heart and really broke me for a bit all these thoughts started going through my head you're an idiot you're a failure how could you do that you know you're poor you got bad credit you're meant to be the man the provider You've got a son coming into the world and you can't even do the most basic thing and provide a home for him. And I felt ashamed. 
um, and I stopped looking for a while and I kind of gave up and I'd literally at the time house prices were booming in the western suburbs and it's kind of like I just looked like that dream of finally owning my own home was just getting you know running away from me as the prices were running away so about two years went by and again like I said I just watched these house prices run away from me until I thought you know what I really need to make this happen where there's a will there's a way um, the default was about two years off of being taken away and I came up with a plan now I'm not saying this was the best and smartest plan and looking back now it definitely wasn't but um, you know again I was just FOMOing and I wanted that dream so bad that dream that we're all sort of uh, owning our own home here in Australia and so what I did is I couldn't afford the houses in my area anymore so I ventured out into regional Victoria where I found some off the plan land that wasn't going to title and I tried to time that up with my default being removed. So I started like before going to open homes, going to um, display homes, speaking with consultants, speaking with developers, trying to figure out a way how I could do this and how I could structure this deal. So after looking again at many display homes and lands that I was after, I finally came across this uh, middleman um, and he said he could do me a deal, a pretty good deal that I thought at the time. There was a block of land in regional Victoria in Ballarat. It was 512 square metres and it was only 134,000, much cheaper than in the western suburbs of Melbourne where that piece of land would have been 250, 300,000. And so I told him my situation that I had a default and um, it was due to come off after about two years um, and he said look this land's not due to title for about a year and normally there's always delays um, and he said even if you got a default I may be able to find a specialist lender because at the time I did have good employment and had a savings history and they still may be happy to lend for me so the deal was is uh, the builder would actually pay my 5% bill deposit and I'm sure they factored that into the bill price and um, I had to pay him about $5,000 in fees for negotiating the deal. Again, something that uh, was pretty much a rip-off. Um, I could have just done it myself. And um, they actually even paid the rest of the land deposit because it was only about $6,000. And I just entered a contract with them to pay it back uh, every month interest-free. And because this uh, was just a small builder and they're hungry for business. And so I thought, yes, finally it's going to happen. So rushed into it again, signed the contract, put my uh, few thousand dollars deposit for him, a thousand dollars deposit for the land down, um, signed the contract and I was you know, finally going to live that dream again. So a lot of time went by, um, I just paid back about 500 bucks a month until that uh, five and a half thousand of the balance that was left for the land deposit because you have to pay 5% land deposit when you uh, buy a piece of land paid that back to the builder and um, the builder said you don't have to pay the five percent build uh, deposit back we'll just you know give the bank a receipt saying you've paid that I'm sure they factored that into the building cost and uh, so yeah it did happen there was lots of delays it took um, just over two years for the land to title but it was almost like fate um, I went through all these hard times went through uh, uh don't even know what getting a bit emotional, but um, yeah, I went through a lot of heartache and hard times and felt very ashamed and felt like I was never going to make it. And uh, it felt good to know that I didn't give up and um, just uh, through my will and through uh, finding ways of hustling and deals, I did manage to uh, secure that block of land. And now I'm building uh, my dream home that I've always wanted as a child, something that I'm going to be proud of. And now I've got a three-year-old son, um, going to be able to run around the backyard with him. And uh, yeah, it's awesome. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. The story is, guys, um, not saying now's the best time to buy or anything, especially here in Melbourne, things are crazy. But if you really do want to own your own dream home, it may not be easy. There may be a lot of setbacks. Um, maybe some heartaches, maybe some things like me from the past come up to bite you in the ass. Um, but if you don't give up, if you keep saving, if you work hard, it is achievable. 
You may not be able to buy in the best area. I bought in regional Victoria. Um, I had to wait over two years for my land to title. I had to negotiate to find a deal where the builder was able to help me out. Um, but I did manage to do it, and I know you can do it too. So, guys, I hope you learned something from my story. And um, if you did, it will really help out the channel if you just smash the like button for the whole YouTube algorithm. Comment your thoughts below. Um, what would have you done in my situation? And uh, if you want to subscribe, I try to keep you all up to date with the property market and uh, the economy because there's a hard times coming and I've definitely been through some hard times and I'm hoping to share what I learned with all of you. So, of course, I'll see you in the next video.